Welcome to this week's Augusta Only Podcast. On this today's podcast, I will discuss why John Cena defended Vince, Ric Flair and Dustin Ray Muta. I will do some vicious rants on GCW and many more news, recaps, and hot takes. All right, then let's start with a dynamite recap. Let's get to the show. Let me get into my notes. Mm-hmm. All right, here's a here's a show for the update. Mm-hmm. The dynamite op- open aired. You already know mm-hmm. it opened this week. Aired this week. We saw Excalibur edition the show. As a camera pan in the crowd, he had three huge championship matches with schedule. But first, you already know Roberts introduced NJF. Mm-hmm. NJF made an entrance for a rebar mitzvah ceremony. Mm-hmm. NJF walked to the ring with two pair of women inside of him. When he arrived at the ringside, he invited women to kiss him on the cheek. Reed did. The other full on made out with him for a few seconds. Meanwhile, Scalber hyped to schedule matches. Mm-hmm. NJF entered the ring and asked for muse efforts music to be cut. Scalber said, Bar Mitzvah does usually begin like this. He gives the fans a hard time once they get Bret Hart excited. He said, Shawn Michaels is much better. Let's be honest, he said. They're all three here to celebrate the most important day in the record of human history, my birthday. He said, the religion, the only religion that matters, Judaism, when a boy turns to a man, he is 13, has a bar mitzvah. He said, when he tapped on Brian Dennis to become an undisputed best professional wrestler in the world, retain the most important title of all in professional wrestling, he's no longer a mere man. Now I am an Iron Man, he shouted. Taz interjected, oh, what a rush. So, yeah. MJ said to his music, a bunch of Jewish teenagers ran to the ring and did a traditional dance in the ring. He lifted his chair, rocked up and down. Jungle Boy Jack Perry, music interrupted. The kids fled at the ring as Perry walked to the ring. Guevara then came out to his theme song. Guevara began to speak. Darby Allen's music interrupted. He made his way out to a nice pop from the fans. Then a loud Darby chant broke out. And Jeff yelled, they were ruining his bar, rebar mitzvah. He asked what they want. They all said in unison that they want a tall shot. And Jeff said, they're really cute, Perry said. Shut up, Max. Perry said, the last time they wrestled, it was at Double or Nothing 2020, the very first pandemic pay-per-view with no fans in the crowd. He said, he went back and forth for nearly 20 minutes in the Florida heat until NJ cheated and won. He said that their lives went in a very different direction thereafter. He said, NJ got where he won while he spent the rest of the pandemic wrestling on AEW and Dark. He said, NJ may not have wrestled on Dark Rampage Elevation, but they all have. You gotta walk. You have to walk around and do what you while you want. I said it's a whole rock room full of men, women who bust their asses, and they get sixty cents a week on a show. Well, I had to sit back and watch you do the hokey bullshit you've been doing the past four years. Devon said the truth hurts, doesn't it? <sighs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Perry says the pain revolves around you. He says the solution the best is take a time for him. And just says about does it? Does it I like that he's a star. Guevara says he's going to take a turn on recursation and genders and NJ doesn't shut up. Guevara says he talks too much. He says way of doing lying, cheating, and kisses ass in the door. He says get to AEW. He said he had a grind industry for 10 years while working at fast food places. He said when he finally got there, he was told he was only supposed to be in a sickness. God, job guy. The bumpy guy for Jericho. He said he overcame all his obstacles to become a three-time champion. He's never had the machine push him and he never needed it. He said he had himself and he'll win the title. Where and whenever MJF likes it or not, when the dumbass case is like Canadians likes it or not, he'll be world champion someday and you'll know it. And just said it was really cute, recuperated his catchphrase, it was nice like a raw up, take a break while getting in the locker room, the brawls while everyone in the back. Darby erupted that setting the corner the ring. He asked the fans to hold their applause. It was done. He's prickly. He said in 2013 he was going to film school and he would turn into a movie. His teacher told him he had to change everything about it because the school didn't accept that kind of movie. He told her he had to drop out of school and change his style. He said that he was a blessing in disguise because it gave him the balls to become a pro wrestler. He said it was the first day of Brady, Brady Wayne Academy to either make it or not beat Darby Allen, but he wouldn't change a thing. He approached Tari Khan and said there would not be a bit more for him because AEW lets him be him. He said, said the biggest problem he has with AEW is there are grown men in the back on Twitter. <laughs> he used a high-pitched voice. He mocked wrestlers saying they're unhappy. They're upset. Why are out of contrast? They don't get what they want. He said NJF did it too with his bidding war 2024. Crap. He talks about NJF doesn't want to give a toss shot. He's going to complain about it on Twitter. He laughed and said it's not true. He'll beat his face with skateboard and give him a headlock takeover. NJF yelled he hasn't had enough of all of them. Darby said he looks like shit. Scott said he's got black eyes for the Iron Man match. NJF called 
Perry, Jungle, Jabardi, you call Dari Dangerous, Dari's a so skateboarder, Mime, and regarding Sammy said, We got Sammy and my son in the proposal to another girl, Kavara. Sammy nodded, smiled, and brought out NJ's fiance and left him. So basically, and it said, NJ said, Jungle had Christian say, Jericho, Darby has Sting. He's saying he rolled in the yo, yo, daddy did case. He has been racing since day one. Fans talk to NJ with a warlord chase and not afraid to admit that the past, the present, future eight of pillars make him stick to something. Ah, uh, the pillar, uh, the only pillar he can this place up, said. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, um. Turn back the loads. Okay. The pillars that make him stick to stomach. I'm the only pillar who can keep this place up, he said. He has defeated all of them. He said none can sniff his belt. He said he should all leave his party because none of them were invited. He said he's going to ESK because he deserved it. He pie faced Perry. Perry hit him with the mic from the behind when NJ turned. Guevara attacked Perry with high knee. Darby brawl with Sammy. Shove him to NJ on the ring apron. NJ landed on a cake on the table. Ringside. NJ threw up his hat. Was treated to the back. Sands. You deserve it. So let's let's get to the critique. Here's what I think about this assignment. There's a lot to like, a lot to critique there. First of all, it was way too inside by tastes. Some of it worked on two levels, but the stuff about me desired Bump Taker, Jabroy's put all your Miss Pretend World show into the British side, you know. Which then makes the idea of being invested in a fight for a pretend time when premium during outcomes seem pointless and silly, like pandering to the audience to tell them that I didn't tell them a more logical character because this story with a narrative structure of a pro wrestling show. I did get a kick out of Darby making the fun of wrestling, complaining on Twitter about he, how they represent AEW, they can work on multiple levels. He's everyone's hero this week, public whining on Twitter about private stuff, it's like a bad look, pretty much always. The, the dig of Guevara finance situation worked. Also, the, is it not a counter or productive as to have Guevara's heel cutting down another heel in JF? It overall reality the pillars worth doing. I'd rather see Guevara aim his critique at Barbie and Parent Barry wearing the firm up. He's a heel and having the left off saucer and the work on industry and fast food joints that goes against his, his character should be otherwise about. What actually stood out was me another tone deaf moment for Perry when he hit MJ for the when the behind on the mic, yes, the engine pie faced him, but a pie faced him hit a heel behind with a weapon. He should have spun around, whacked him, and engine made a concert. The downside of the segment is none of the reasons really ready to be a believable contender for the AEW title, given how they've been pushed or performed the last three months. But Perry and Darby are all like sold enough points for ready to a dungeon and diamond match. Yes, it's predictable, but it would be a better and Jim didn't land on the cake at some point. And Jim was really thrilled throughout the right picks up brush cockiness and showing ass. So, yeah, it's basically what it is in that segment. So, in this segment, it was good and bad. So, you know, that's what the segment was. So, yeah. Alright, well, basically, they show. Alright, they show clips of Jericho City Hall being honored with Jericho on his way to Chelsea Town Street, being up, given a plaque and a medal. Then Scalver plugged the upcoming matches. Alright, so Moxie, Carlson, and William Yota defeated the Dark Order. It was a little matchup, 26 minutes, it was a battle. It was a hard fought match. There was one little moment where, where Carter gets to a bike pile drive race out with help of Yuna Mox. That was the moment I liked about that match. And let's go forward to it now. Get forward to it. So, yeah, a spike pile drive ring session. Honestly, never be ever be a mid match move. Honestly, in my opinion, it should be end of wrestlers who take it, but he kicked out of two. So, honestly, I want to say it's dumb, but I'm going to have to be serious on this. You know, it's dumb. I'm sorry, it's dumb. It should be an ender move. So, yeah. So, yeah, it was basically like that. You know, it's how what it is. I don't know. But anyway. There's more to yeah. It was a hard hitting all action match. The crowd ate it up. It was a credit to Mox Cloudy Muta that managed to give enough ring time or dark order to make them credible enough to a ring with them. Udo and Grayson had done their part. It's still a stretch, but not glaring as a mismatch as executive has seen. So yeah, after the match, Mox held on to hold. Mox Claudia triple team. Uno, John Ma John Silver, Renz K cleared the ring of Mox, Claudio Yuda, who retreated to the crowd. Mox flex Claudio show off his muscles. Then we go to Scalbert, Drews of Legendary with Juice Robinson talks about his attack on Ricky Stark Ricky Starks last week. He bragged about DT Stark's surgically repaired neck on the mat. He said he wouldn't do a steady squat. 
So yeah, it's mostly not that. It's about it's gonna be Ricky. It's gonna be Ricky Stars to Juice Robinson feud. We're gonna see that more often. So, all right, Scalvin, usually hyped the coming matches. We get a clip of the opening segment. Scalvin pillars can make a compelling case for themselves. This was all right. Jay Cardell versus Nicole Matthews. There's also a debut of Tiger Valkyrie. So yeah, Jay Mad. Challenge Matthew's puncher. Matthew did it. Quickly, quickly, Jay quickly came back. Landed a punk hit to the chest. Hit her Jay to finish her with a quick win. So, my now, my opinion, I suppose holding the view audience stay consistent with Jay being dominant or issue. The man was a barrel wrestler. So, I started a Canadian indie scene. Then we get to it. Like, this is where we did it. Okay, interview Jay in the ring. She asked about competition looking for it. Jay back Renee's her corner. Ready to fuck her up. Then Tiger Factory came in, debuted in a dancing segment. They said there were huge rumors that she was a free agent. He said she might no longer be a free agent, but our future second TBS champion. She faced off with Jayus to the ring. They say words. Great try to hit Valkyrie, but spun around first on like Perry with Minjay earlier. Valkyrie just slammed Gray onto the mat. Smart and Sterling scourged Jay from re entering ring. Valkyrie danced and smelled some more. Struck a pose. So. Yeah, this was a, this was a weird way to debut Tiger Valkyrie, but still good. It's what it is. So that's what it is, right? right. So yeah, it's what it is. How Shabbat interviewed Ricky Starks backstage. He asked Juice what he done at AEW. He said Juice Bullet Club relevant in 2015, but it's 2023. He said Juice had an issue with him. Alright, alright. Furtherly, like Ricky Starks had an issue with Juice, and come on, bring it. It's also bringing Bullet Club with him. So there's hints of Bullet Club. So let's just see for next week. Like for like Rampage. or Let's try. Let's watch. All right. For Rampage. Yeah. Rampage and next week's Dynamite. To, to watch out. Look out for it. Oh. No to it. Um, I'm going to. Anyone who watches that. Like the Rampage is going to be a little late. Like Rampage is like. on Because of the basketball thing. Rampage will be reviewed. I'll have, it'll be a little bit late with the notes. But Rampage will still be reviewed immediately when I find the notes for Rampage. So stay tuned. Like at the Diamond, I will do an ROH, like an ROH. Oh yeah, ROH recap as well. So stay tuned for that. After the recaps, I will do news, wrestling news, John Cena interview, Mega interviewed, hot takes, and a GCW rant. Stick, stick out for those. Look out for those. Alright, and here my analysis and my opinion on this. It was honestly a good straight promo. For a promo without any fourth wall breaking or pandering inside references. Just looking eyes with a camera and just arriving a beable style matter is good. Then we get a commercial air for Shaman Zazam mixed with Angela Jet Jar Arms Cast, among others. Then we got a clip of air last week's angle with QT Marshall helping Powell's house beat Warlow. Then we got QTV. QT Marshall holds second quarter office segment when Hobbs are signing with Marshall break in. They had footage of break in. Real, they stole it. Marshall laughed honestly. Everyone else, Leave a base asking nerdsy, what's next for Warlow? Aaron saw that. Where is next for Batista? That's good. So they all laughed. Marshall revealed that he has, he has Will's passport. Hobbs stood up and said, Welcome to Will's world, bitch. So that's pretty more like that. And. Then we got um, Cecily and Scalibur hyped the house of defense time on Rampage against Ray Phoenix. So, watch that. Ray said it was going to be about, unfortunately, you know, NFC's men's basketball. It'll be later than usual. Yeah, we don't know. That's why Rampage was taped. It's always going to be taped, so okay. Jet Jared. All right, Iron Cassie defeated Jet Jared for the AEW International title. It was a weird entrance. The matchup was good. We got we got a moment with Shockmaster fan. We also have something about an international title, Shazam promotion and stuff. And some moments and stuff. Yeah, Cassie wanted to retain the, t- the TNT, I mean, the, the AEW International title. So here's my analysis. So basically, I mean, I'm sorry about the analysis. I can't call on it. Here's my take. Now, honestly, these German matches bring you back to the early years of TNA with constant twists and turns and interference. Rap bumps is so different than most of what AEW has done with much matchbook to date. The crowd seemed to into it, though. So, yeah. That was my take on this. Yeah. It's how what it is. It's 
it's what it is if you think about it. So, I don't know. Play around with it. All right, we got a bitch in the air with Hustle Black talking about being Trio's champions. A commercial air for AWL Access coming my train knife. So, mm, you know, I'm, I'm going to review the three shows that a Dynamite, Rampage, and ROH. I don't know about that Saturday night thing. Like, it's going to come next month announcement. I'll think about it. But you know what? Maybe I'll, I'll have to review on it. I'll just do a highlight. Like, I'll just announce the matches instead. So that solves the problem. The match results for the Saturday night show. So that's my solve that problem. So, yeah. Anyway, we got a producer route here with Cassie talking about being friend and friend act with reference made to Mitch Merchant Cano's Faye Fall. Scott Burke called the acclaim a grown organic, grown homegrown act here in AEW. We got the outcast, made a ring. Surreal told the face of the mouth. Ruby said once upon a time the grass was greener in AEW until a couple of bitches came on, pissed all over the gra- grass. <laughs> she asked Surreal what they do, bitches or a host broken. Surreal said, show them AEW is a house. Everyone else should kiss in the ground and walk on. Because without them, there wouldn't be a division. So they're lucky she is there. All fans, neck, beard, sweaty, sticky twats. Yeah. Mm hmm. Listen up, fat people. Yeah, it talks about fat people. So, you know, they listen to the beaten. Then we got, then Hater, Brit Bank, Charge, that's at the Outcast. Outcast recovered, outnumbered them. Throw at the Baker Man production, take it off her belt, use a weapon, Sky Blue, Rio, Wheel Nigel, ran off for the say. Survive, talk about how Outcast is a pretty pain them in his matches. Sky Blue says, a case of enemy, and my friend. Baker is gay. Hater looked over Hill, Rio with mixed emotions. So yeah, most of this it's a women's segment. It was pretty good. It was played perfect, played to perfect. So it was played to perfection. It was pretty good. So we might see a match out of this. So we'll wait and see what will happen. Blood and guards. I might see double. We're gonna have double or nothing match for these women. I'm about money. So mm-hmm. a promo air with Matt Menor and Andrew Park. Menor said, Mass Cast and Vinny made nipples hard. Parker said, He deserved a Tony Award. They told their clan, the Belly Gun, to put respect on the Jericho Priest Society and heard Ramp and just Rampage this Friday. So, yeah, it's a promo. Then, Scopper Height Rampage. We got Rampage for, for this week. I'll review later on. I said, Menor Park vs. Bollywood Boys. Valkyrie in ring debut. Haas Open Challenge. And basically, and also, mm-hmm, like, oh, yeah. Alright, it was, oh yeah, Brody, okay, it was like, Brody King versus Daniel Garcia, that was the main event, uh, it was forgettable, nah, I'll still, like, I'll probably recap it, I'll still try to watch it, but it's probably forgettable, so, then we got next week, next week features Hook versus Stokely Hathaway, yeah, let's go to the main event, House of Black versus Jericho Peace Society versus the Elite. It was a true trio title match. We got Holy Sit Trance. Yeah. It's not everyone getting into the ring. Like, as a black retained the titles against them. So, yeah, this was an impactful match. Like, everything went down. Like, we had basically we had moments. Like, Guevara here, Shoe Star to Jackson. There was House of Black taking Jericho through round one. Then we had Brody hit Dante's Inferno, like a broke up the cover. Then we got Roman Java hit King with the baseball bat. Then we got Guevara leaping onto Mega Nick Jackson's ringside. And you know, there were moments saying you. Then Black caught Jericho with a spinning wheel kick. So basically, Matthews kick a black team, triple team Garcia for the win. So also Black retained the t- trios titles. And, and honestly, it wasn't that good. So you know. It was a good matchup. Like, it was straightforward. Get to the point. That's what you want. But it's what it is. So, all right. After the match, Hager marched the ring. Check on the JS cars. He had the ring. We're at the House of Black. It was Owen and Mealy. Hangman, Dark Order, and Brawl with Yuta, Mox, and Claudio on the stage. Hangman into the ring. Mox, Yuta, Claudio on the ring. Omega and the Bucks stepped up to protect Hangman. And that's what pretty much ended the show. Pretty much, pretty much this was a great Dynamite for a Canadian episode. And it was pretty good. Alright, I'll now, now I'll go to ROH. Alright, let's do the Ring of Honor recap now. Let's start with episode 3 of Ring of Honor. We got 
Casanoli versus Liddy Mac. It is going to be a great matchup. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. All right. Like Mac received a non title against Casanoli this week, but this was labeled a proven ground match. The win will earn him a shot. It's similar to the AEW Championship Eliminator matches. So they begin with standard exchange of hold, reversals. Mac is a big dude, but he's not ready to mix it up. On the match, when needed arises, the longer it went, the more physical it became. Castanelli took every opportunity to show up his power by throwing Mac around. The big man showed he could speed to keep up with the ROH champion. Did a great job making it feel like Mac had believed he had a chance to win. It made it so the Castanelli victory would up out of nowhere much better. So honestly, like, like what did I like that Castanelli took a page out of Smojo's book, The Walkaway Spy, but Mac. Saw it coming and just cut the sh dive short, so it was pretty good. So we got Mike Bennett next versus Dante Martin. The Kingdoms Bennett took on top flight of Dante Martin, the second match of the night. So Bennett had Taven and Canals by his side. Dante had Dante Ma Martin, Darius Martin's corner, keeping things as even as possible. But these two men are similar size, but look very different styles of wrestling. Ben is more technical and methodical with his offense, while Martin is a high flyer who favors speed over anything else. However, both men are known how to adjust their style to match their opponent, so they ended up working well to get a pretty entertaining contest that allowed both men to show their skills. A power job turns ramp on almost led to mm, Dante being counted out, but he beat the 20 count by a few seconds to keep the match going. Both men came close to winning a few times before Dante scored a win with a gig slam. This bout was going to have been featured on any pay per view card. He's got to kill it. You should have to go out of your way to watch this match. So, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, you should go away to watch this match. Seriously. Go out your way and watch this match. You know? Like, try to go out your way to watch this match. Like, it's on RH TV now. It's on Honor Club, so you have a chance. So. Watch it as best you can. All right, next one is da Ari Davari, Slim J versus Mets League and Blake Christian. Bla I mean, Blake Christian. At the events of last week's show, a tag team was booked as Slim J and Ari Davari. Just Buster's taking on Mets League and Blake Christian. Some experienced tag is again in Japan Pro Wrestling. Malik Christian had the upper hand at first with some heel tacks from Slim and Davari turned the tie quickly. Once they were grounded, Mets League Christian spent a lot of time on defense. The Rise Slim used quick tags to keep one man isolated for long periods of time. And they gained a hot tag late in the match. Match at least scored a win with spinning Michigan driver. This was highly entertaining, especially during the second half. So, yeah. So, yeah. Metalik is needs more of a defined character. Town the Lucha is not deteriorating from other rest wrestlers who are just as good. Honestly. So, yeah. They are his best for Metalik for now. But we do need to see a Brian Danson versus Metalik. Eddie Case versus GSK. No member of the Spusters was in action when GSK took, took on Eddie Case. And Castle came out of the ring to watch the match with the crowd. Mad King kept his eyes on the original champion for never got the man. He, he ended up not he got his coffee over. By throwing K into the break, he ran in front of him when he was sitting at the at the yell at each other. The champ made his way back to where Kingston was a massive suicide dive to the face. He could be recovered, probably dragged his sleeve in the ring for the quick win. This wasn't a mad long match, but it accomplished the goal of making Kingston look like a badass while furthering his feud with Casanoli. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, I feel that the camera was perfectly placed for the K suicide die, so this was a genuine surprise, in my opinion. We got Athena versus Hyen. Hyen had a chance at a title shot this week if she was able to defeat her last 10 minutes against the range women's champion Athena. The chat been on roll lately, mostly during skit scoring a hard fight with their Willow during the premiere of ROH two weeks ago. Athena dominated the opponent from the mountain and bell ring by using aggressive, stiff offense. High in the man to get a handful of moves, but just to serve the piss Athena off. She grabbed High in by the throat and brought her down to the match. She could leash a tore the strikes. She almost got herself disqualified by touching an official, but ended up scoring the win with a cross face. This was a great show for Athena, but it probably won't end up. High and sizzle real anti soon. So yeah. Now we got Silas Young versus Marcus Cross. The last woman in professional wrestling made a return to RH this week. Silas Young battled Marcus Cross. While Cross not exactly defenseless, Young definitely dominated his matches all bringing Young back to the RH and immediately established him as a threat. 
You don't see a song on the match of the week, but it was our this performance from both guys because they did exactly what they expected them. Young scored the win just a few minutes, much to the light of the crowd. Yeah, and the crowd. Mm -hmm. And Cyrus won one. Like, like Young looked like he was some Jack Roberts. Like, Young finished really cool, but it looks like we're easy to make him a stay with trying to bounce on turn record like that, is my opinion. Honestly, that's my opinion. Alright, the Embassy versus Dalton Castle, the boys, six man titles. Castle and the boys lost six man tag titles, the best seat at the end of last year, so they look at their game gold form a glorious match. We got Cage, Toa Young, Conrad, copied by his not friends. Conrad and Castle start for the team, which probably marked because they were two closet competitors inside. Both teams playing moments, but there were times we felt like they were rushing moves in the next so they could pack as much into the next month. The action was fun, frantic, but there was a couple of pacing issues along the way. The embassy ended up retaining and complain both of the boys at the same time. So the embassy came to attack them after the match was over. But the new trio, mentally Christian and AR Fox, chased them up. This was something good, and yeah, it was pretty good. So yeah. I think Castle's giving it so unique to him that it can be never recreated by anyone else. That's my opinion. And you know, it's not that bad. No. Yeah, that's what it is. Alright. Trisha Dora versus Madison Rain. Two women looking to rise out of the ranks. Arch Women's Division Week when Madison Rain battled Trisha Dora. Because both of them were bay faces, they had clean string and things going. They were still so first, but they were. Uh, when? The liability can do to not have my experience opponents for the boss team with the end of the signs from the crowd room adds a feeling and the door is going or the win both women show respect was over the code of all after it was over. Right. And Dora ended up scoring the win again. Both women show respect was over and court of honor was over. So Dora won, observing the court of honor. So there's more merch. We talk about Kabani Coleman does such a great job phone people in our age history in a quick way. So the weird part is that Dora was unable to support Rain on her shoulders, but rolled through the turn to different moves to save the spot, so it was okay. But the submission on Dora used halfway through the match was cool, but unrealistic because it would have been easy for Rain to counter it. So it was a bit unrealistic. But anyway, let's go on to the next match: the Outriders versus Masaya, Chris Daniels. The Outriders made their RH debut last week and took on the team of Seidel this week and, and Daniels, like. Troop Magnum, Turbo Floyds used some cheap tactics tricks to keep control away. They hit Seidel at bay while double team Daniels and attempt to win the match early. The end up the end the match ended up pretty short when Seidel Daniels were able to regroup. They score a win to get their partnership off a good start. So Seidel Daniels and Daniels won. Here's the thing. True Magma and Turbo Floyd are grabbable rollers and names are good. Then we saw Aussie Open confront this Seidel Daniels after the match. So there's some interest there. And now we have for the pure championship, William Utah versus Clark Connors. The main event of the show saw so Utah defend the Arch Pure Champ against Connors. These men are no strangers, no one under the pre match. The video package filled as a wider fight as well as pure rules match. Both have emphasis submissions, other types of instances, punches that face are legal. Both men are like walking Swiss Army Knights when it comes to pro wrestling. They can do a little bit of everything. I did the main event should have been the match of the night of the show, but not only this was on a technical level, nothing else for the show came thus close. Thus, everything you needed was executed to perfection. While well, Connor put in a great fight, you will you Yuda was able to pound him up in the combination to score a win. Yuda grabbed the mic, called it to Kasura Shabana in a match, the match to end the show. Yeah. So basically, yeah. We're gonna have Shabata and Yuda and Super Card of Honor. Here are some notes like that Connor actually hit a brew for Brain Buster, you know? It's amazing. It's, a, it's here kind of weird you hear Yuta suck chance. So having like having Yuta wear so fast force Connors use one punch to break the hole it was actually a great spot. It was and the one when Yuta hit back one punch moment later one was on was to me icing on the cake. You know, it was icing on the cake to me. So alright, let's go to Rampage. Let's do the Rampage review. Okay. Sorry to show okay. Mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately, here's the thing. I told you again, the show had delayed starting time due to TNT's coverage of NCAA State Basketball. Luckily, I watched it late night, so it was easy for me. And I told you again, it'll be, 
I managed to bring it up. So anyway, let's go to that. We have Valkyrie make her debut. Power Ups Hawks defend their title against Phoenix. Manar Parker battle the Bible Boys in the main event. Garcia took on Broder King. Let's talk. We got the TNG champ for Hobbs versus Ray Phoenix. So basically, mm -hmm. so okay, basically I'm gonna like basically near the end near the end of the match. Phoenix got a two count frog splash. He kicked Hobbs again, staggers him. Hobbs attacks Phoenix and plants some swine bus. He put Phoenix in torture right, slams him for the win. You already know. Winner is still a champion, power is Hobbs. There were moves where Phoenix pulled some crazy moves on, on Hobbs, but Hobbs made a comeback. Then during the, like after the match, Hobbs approached Alex Airhand to grab him. QT Marshall drops a hit drops Airhands with a diamond cutter. And that was it. That was the end match the the clip. The post match segment. Let's go to the promo. Duke Grayson comments on return to AEW. He talks about that he's coming back for revenge because Backpole Comic Club gave Uno, Uno a concussion. He challenges Monster to a match on Dynamite. In a tape promo, like, there's another tape promo. Adam Cole previews his return to the ring, which will come on March 29th episode of Dynamite. Tyler Valkyrie versus Ava Lawless, yeah. Valkyrie dominates, hits a spear, gets the win with a road to Valhalla with a tie Valkyrie. And basically after the match, like the character shows the US champion Jay Cargill, Leah Gray, and Mark Story on stage. With Story taking notes, like Valkyrie stares him down. Like my Hardy, eat the page. Alright, let's get to it. Hardy, eat the page, Cassie. Train hook halfway with match on hook on the March twenty two episode Dynamite. Alright, um Alright, go well, now we go to Jericho Society, PC Society members, Parker and Menard with Bollywood Boys. Two teams go back and forth, showcase their tattoos, chemistry. The Bollywood Boys rally with Parker and Menard with double DT. Winners, Jenica Park and Menard. Menard Park. Mockley says so down to the match, so you match to the claim in the adventure. There's another adventure. Don Kaz calls Kanosuke Kataki Tashi with a peg of fan favorite stars giving flowers. The looming match between Kenny Omega and Hijo that they can know is highlighted in a video package. And, um, a video shows the guns running to the top flight and agree to face off in a tag title match. The, the match is confirmed. For March 22nd, AEW Dynamite. Um, so Daniel Garcia versus Brody King. Virginia Hart. Garcia hugs Jericho and he beats the King early on. It was a main event. He was quick as King's power. The King in the upper hand. Charles Garcia loses the ring. King falls Garcia, who dances from Julia. Hart. King clubs. Garcia's chest slams into the barricade. Hit. All right, all right. My King has a running cross on Garcia sitting in front of the chair in front of the barricade. Garcia kicks, kicks feet and charges him, sending the power his face first to steal steps. Tina takes the show, rounds King. King's fired back. Get the two count pile driver. King crushes Garcia with a cannonball corner, but breaks with the pin by putting his foot in a row. Garcia lost sleepover, but King powers his way out. King lives see a rabbit. See rolls out King over two count. He tries King in the wall to Jericho, but King reaches the rope while we're distracted. Jericho hits King with a bat. Garcia looks to locks the drag asleep. King's hand drove three times. The referee calls for the bell. Garcia wins. Jericho celebrates Garcia in the match. So yeah, that was that was a pretty main event rampage main event. It was okay for a ramp for a main event a rampage, so it is what it is. So, yes. All right, that was Rampage, and we just review ROH. So, let's get to the news. And that was the recap. We will start our wrestling news now. Let's let's start with Bray Wyatt's WWE absent reported to a physical issue. So, Bray Wyatt has been physically absent from the last few weeks of television to start his status with the company growing at the Mr. NCAJ Live event on March 12th. Throughout the day, there was rumors speculating that Wyatt walked out. All that stuff, but Fifa Select indicated that this in the case. WWE sources denied these claims. They, the, the claims were denied. So, for the latest report, 
For this week, why is current sign right expect the injury, physical issue, no current timeline for return? So yeah. So it's basically Bray Wyatt's dealing with a physical issue. So we don't know what's gonna happen. So we don't know. Well, why was scheduled to feature a number of episodes to not down several live events? But the company claimed he was pulled with appearances due to a format ish physical issue. Despite this, Wyatt's feud with Lashley has continued to progress by TV by Vigilance and segments involving Uncle Uncle Howdy. As noted by FIFA materials, but Wyatt and Uncle Howdy often sent to side of SmackDown, though over the past two episodes, SmackDown doesn't have been the case. The pro also noted that Wyatt has been, has been factored to create plans for the shows and not scheduled for Raw. According to the report, Lashley was scheduled for tonight's episodes. One of the points weekend, this is unclear when his creative direction heading to WrestleMania will become clear once again. So, Fightful will close their report by knowing they'll continue to reach out for further information out today, clean rumors of creative disagreements. As always, we'll aim to prove any or updates we hear more. So, in a recent update, according to Fightful Select report, WWE Korea were told Bray Wyatt was out due to an illness. He had been in a recent WWE event or television. He was out, wasn't on internal MSG rundown as a Friday. So, yeah, Bray Wyatt is dealing with physical issues. He's ill, so. He's not walking at WWE. He's not doing all that shit. Bray Wyatt is just dealing with some issues with his health and stuff. So let's let's leave this stuff alone and and agree that Fight for Select is the better news coverage. So let's agree. Anyway, former TNA star Crimson arrested. Former star Anthony Mayweather, known as Crimson, got arrested according to Carcel today in Tennessee. The article noted Mayweather was charged with violation of pre-order, previous order of protection. The police abducted a Melfield check on February 24th. It was found that Mayweather with several calls to his juvenile son's phone, several text messages to his wife. Had a Mayweather even while police was present. A warrant was issued for his arrest. He was booked for this weekend. Mayweather was free jail to headbutting his wife in 2016. So yeah, jail records show that Mayweather was taken to custody on 3A and bound it, bound it out the next day. Mayweather was signed to DNA, now Impact West of 2010 to 2013, billed as the Amazing Red's younger brother. So, yeah. Yeah, that's something you go with Mayweather or Crimson's arrest. So, yeah. That's on him. That's his fault. So, what it is, how, how he done, what it's done, how it goes. So, yeah, that's on him. That's his fault. So, don't blame me, blame him. Yeah, that's basically on him. All right, Ric Flair reportedly asked to duck Ray Mutant into the Hall of Fame. Ric Flair said to reveal it, announced this week that he's going to be ducting Ray Mutant into the Hall of Fame. The first was Ray, announcing was Ray Mysterio. It was now the next one's going to be Great Muta. Ric Flair will be inducted Great Muta to the Hall of Fame. This was confirmed by a Dave Meltzer on on W O R. So yeah. So basically, Flair was asked to ask to duck Mudo or been asked to duck Mudo. I don't know. People thought it was Sting, but politically it would have been tough before. It would have been even tougher now. So we do know Mudo has been asked to be in the Hall of Fame. We do know that Flair is asked to duck him, so it needs to make sense. So yeah, whether or not Great Mudo will be revealed by Ric Flair, the Hall of Fame Hall of Fame inductee on Wednesday, of course, remains to be seen. But if there's a Hoover Flair announcement, it'll be fair to assume I'll see doing it inducting Great Muta 2. Mm. 2, yeah. So, yeah, Great Muta will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. So, yeah, that's official. Great Flair is going to do it. Good for Flair. And that's what wrestling is. Wrestling wins. Win win for everyone. So, the Hall of Fame, in my opinion, is a joke. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to lead a waiver a bit. We're going to talk about the GCW shit situation. Well, like, when well, GCW is holding a trademark against AEW for the video game trailer, Fight Forever. Like, that's just stupid. And I'm going to get this out of the way. GCW is a shitty hardcore promotion. It's not that good. It's not a game changer. Changer. The only thing that's good is Bloodsport, and that's about it. GCW still sucks. And honestly, I don't know why Brent is going to continue this shit. Brent could go fuck itself, fuck GCW, fuck Janela. You know what I'm saying? Fuck GCW, screw Janela, and Brent could jump off a fucking bridge for all I care. 
Anyway, that was my rant on GCW. Take it or leave it. That's what I say. All right, we're going to Omega's of interview. Kenny Omega. Yeah. Like, Kenny Omega, Young Bucks, became EVP of AEW. It's Conception. They've been cruel to both on screen success of the company all these four-year history. Don't be bigger speculate over the four year the trio spattered the contract edges over the clo- closer. It made it hard to imagine the yeah, clear away from the company had helped to create, but seeing Cody Rose ain't gonna happen regards to challenge in America's two top promotions. But while speaking to Jane, man poison at CBS sees Bernie idea going to W is rapidly putting into Omega. So a new challenge always appealed to him and is all about what he feels most suited for. So, and this is what he says. I think it's the point that anything new appeals to me. Challenges always appeal to me. And one point was all of these. Like he says, if you say I can't do it, I really didn't want to do it. Now it's not like that. I would say I'm older and wiser. I'm like, I'm older and care less about it. That I'm more like what kind of people I can reach, what kind of positive thing I can attribute, what I can really feel best suited for. And that's from Kenny Omega. When that, when when the people ask Kenny Omega, answer with me, and Omega will continue. He said, right? Like, I mean, it, it says again, it's all place on time where you've been reached time yet, and you're not being able to start this cool thing with a lot of my friend people in the industry. We started this cool A thing here in Winnipeg, the place I was born. The place where I'm in a chunk of my, my tea, time carving my teeth for the rest is like, where I do, when it happened, if I've been satisfied, just staying in Winnipeg. What it happened if I sort out the bowl, the old song and dance, and I'm going to go to the US, and when you try to come work. Uh, consider and every success takes serious. I always try, so I was trying to try to find my own way. Uh, at least it's hard to lean into that. Sure, my heart, but let me just I take a thing one step at a time. I feel like, yeah, this is cool, this is right, and what's next? I don't know. I just spoke to you, nothing is told me, nothing went. N- is this what you need to do, right? This is what Kenny Omega said. So, for the interview, like, continue on talking on the future of Kenny Omega. He said his spider sense have been triggered yet regarding what he'll do next. He said, well, yeah, yeah. This, he talks about his spider senses have been triggered yet. Like, he talks about the Winnipeg show. He wanted to be successful at one point, and now it's coming back. I think it's really important again to embrace our Winnipeg wrestling culture. He talks about the culture. This is what Kenny Omega. Like, as mentioned by Kenny, like, AEW Ray did this. This is Winnipeg event thing. The elite, like the 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 House of Black retained the tag belts. It was pretty good, you know. It's how it is. It's how what it is, you know. All right, let's go to Jossie's comments, like interview on Miss 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 Dunduk allegations, praises Roman names and more. We're gonna go to that now. John Cena has been asked the feelings he has about Vince and considering such a misconduct allegation suffers refer last year. So Vince retired set down his role as chairman and CEO. This came as Vince Man was being investigated by the board of directors for such secret settlement deals. There was also accused accusations of sexual assault. Less than one year later, Vince Man ran back and forced himself to present a chairman of the baby's board. During a recent interview with Associate Press, John C. was asked if he had to recount the feelings he had for Vincent and considered the allegation he had uttered. There. This is what John C. had to say. This is what he says. No, it's not hard for feelings what I have for Vince, the allegation I have him. Like, everyone has a right to their perspective. I have rights in my mind. When you love somebody, you take them perfectly perfect as well. We all make mistakes. We have poor decisions. Lord knows I made a clutch of poor choices. That doesn't mean I'm going to go and love somebody. There's no way I can record and say I love Vince McMahon. Yes, yeah, from John Cena. And what I'm gonna say, yeah, like he's not gonna, he's not gonna leave this man. Man, here's the thing: John Cena owes his life to Vince. Like he's just playing it safe. Yes, this man should not be in, back in power. The allegations are still there, and you know, but Cena's gonna be Cena. He's gonna gonna vouch for Vince, and that's who he is. Like you're right, again, Cena owes his life to Vince. So what it is. Is how we're wrestling is. Uh, let's go to the back to the interview. Shazi asked what about fact that we are on the market and mis reports a company for sale. This is what he says. He says about that's the way my pay grade. I don't know what's going on with that. He said he loves Vince. He's everything you could want in a great fire, business partner, fire mentor. He loved the man. His business deals are his business. And what he shares with me, that's between us. I don't know what's going on with corporate structure and WWE correct structure. Oh, WWE, when I'm there, the performer, 
It's WWE Championship Roman Reigns show. In my mind, he's being the conversations. In my mind, he's the greatest of all time. So when Jossie is asked about why he come to back to feud Austin Theory, he was so wrong to explain that he and Pickham was still told that he was gonna be feuding that he will be the feud he'll be doing. You'll be surprised my answer because that's what I was told to happen. I I I don't do that. I don't say I wanna do this. I wanna work with that person. I yeah, I never didn't try to do what I do. Best of my abilities. And the day during my turn, I often try to make performance best I can. What I don't do, I never not encourage such a narrative. I pick opponents, I love to tell stories. I don't pick Dustin Derry, but I can spurtly spoke from the heart. Uh, that was from this week's Raw. So basically, yeah, he'll see it will face Derry because it's a co- company's decision. This is WrestleMania for the U.S. title in Hollywood. This is, here's the thing, this is Cena's first paper match since face Roman Reigns at last year's SummerSlam, 2021. That's a little tiny fact. Oh, there's more news. Like, AEW reported don't have none complete causes of any contracts. This year, the Federal Trade, on January, or this year, the, the Federal Trade Commission posted a ruling to ban non complete causes on labor contracts. The concept of non complete causes was filmed to wrestling fans with WWE on and off to punt them in their talent contracts in the event they release. While non complete causes, causes clauses are complex, WWE, the contract situation, the competitors in AEW slightly less clear. The limited explained ample support towards Fightful Slide not provide insight how the FCA ruling might affect AEW, noting I believe the company did not blend non complete causes of their contracts. Face of the contracts, Fightful Slide went for AEW and News Charlie spoke to. There are any new non complete cause clauses. Attached to make them non compete costs that uh, standard in WWE deals with main roster lasting 90 days and they see last in general 30 days. However, AEW wrestling, AEW wrestling doesn't seem to have any. So, yeah, this is from Fightful to confirm. Fightful confirms this, yeah. So, Fightful adds is that when they ask AEW source for information, they told the company doesn't simply release talent anyway unless there's a special request. Or necessary necessity necessity for discipline measures does non complete costs have been a priority. So uh so yeah. So non complete causes effectively send the life of an expiring contract. Those often acquire talent to agree to charge to have a few example. We have Alice so far. Fightful were told we're told oh yeah, we're told that generally has been a case by case based for AEW. So one powerful example of non compete come into play on the side days could affect CM Punk. Well five on the enemy I spoke with a company believes they had like to strip from joining WWE for a period of time should be released for AW contract. So yeah. So AW don't have non completes. Don't have non compete clauses. It makes sense if you want to release, ask Tony Khan. Sometimes they're mostly granted for a special case. Or special reason or disciplinary disciplinary measures. So it's what it is. How you play it is how you do it. There will be reported cutbacks to this year WrestleMania. This year's WWE WrestleMania 29. Hollywood reportedly has some cutback regarding staff. As many as point WWE current process time to sold with coming with coming getting sold. This man back in company at Triman Chairman Board oversee a potential sale. This is going to lead to fresh signs in town at release to bring down company costs and make them more attractive to the buyers. And yet to happen and talk about biggest show year, WrestleMania we're seeing a cutbacks. Apparently, these changes will not be too noticed by fans, though. Yeah, it probably won't. WWE are trying to make cutbacks here as well as the main show with the idea of increasing profit margin and share gain company ready for a sale. So, this is from Meltzer. He says this. He talks about there'll be cutbacks in the show, not a way fans notice. There's gonna be less personal people coming in from foreign language announcers been previously announced to be around like remote. There's gonna be some te- sort of teams networks are doing more of a, like the idea of this pre profit margin of the show is like this gets to get ready for a company ready for sale. This is from Meltzer. Were not cutbacks we made, ready to be seen? Like there'll be they are still many that main they'll say a major change with some media that will affect the fans viewing parents in a big way. So it's not that all bad. So it's WrestleMania. All right, quick talk. Like this year's WrestleMania, should I go for watching? Like I wouldn't watch WWE anymore. So you know, I'm gonna try watch WrestleMania this year. For once, WrestleMania is looking good, except for the Lesnar and Omar Omas match. No, 
The rest is good. Cody versus Roman is good. So I'll give it a watch. I'll try to watch it. So Mercedes Monet, let's see it's about let's go to the Mercedes News. Apparently had no Japan stardom dates left after 4-3-23 Grandum Stardust Show has it now. That's what's in April. So Monet, New Japan short lived one. Monet's Shasta Banks made her debut to start a year. She appeared at Kingdom Come Again, challenge Kari Sayer, IWG Women's Champion. Kari was set up to challenge her to Monet's reign debut of battle last month. She did won the IWGP Women's Champion. So, yeah. It stands revealed that Marissa Monet will make her first defense IWGT title versus, versus Azam on New Japan's Jessica Card on April. Like she's also supported book for Startup debut and on Startup All Grand Show Queendom. How do I quote a Meltzer? Like she probably doesn't have any more parents book for Stardom, whatever new Japan. Talks about as of right now, Monet has no days left for breast Bushy Road there. April twenty third, the Yoko Rita show. This is from May this is what Dane Meltzer. Like, take it with a grain of salt. So of course it'll be a soon reveal soon. She would work more dates. I think she would work I think she's gonna re sign for more dates in Japan. Sorry, um, that's my opinion. Like that's gonna happen. I don't see her coming back to WWE. I don't see it. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't. I don't see it. I don't care if she go to AW Impact or anywhere. I know for a fact I I don't think she'll ever come back to WWE. That's my opinion. I'm sorry. No. I'm not sorry for that. Fuck it. Yeah. Well, but as but luckily there is a long list of stardom for town. I would love honestly to her to see Russell's in stardom. I would love to see it on Twitter highlights, so uh, because I I don't know I can afford it, but it's my podcast. I'm I'm making do. <laughs> okay, we go to Jay White before we talk about WWE AEW. Mm. So Jay White is currently the former Sushi Bay Jay White is currently the hottest free agent before he talks to both companies. As a defeat, loser leaves Japan match to Galileo, followed by loser leaves to Japan against Eddie Kingston. It's clear what future holds at White. But many people linking the stars of both WWE and AEW. While while it's a chat to push back for both America's top two promotion, interest is strong, but based on a news report for Reserve Newsletter, the dirty old is yet to prepare to pay for air company is many unsure of next route. In in fact, Reserve states White is fifty fifty in regards to decision. Regarding Jay White, we're told that White has been taught in WWE, but not been signed. Also, been taught in AEW from some familiar situation. He described it as, described as a 50 50 side would go with. So, yeah, this is from Wrestling Observer Newsletter, mostly. So, Jay White, the former IWA champion, WGP champion, Triple Con champion, first ever New Japan Grand Slam champion. So, there are going to be many fans of Tree, Gracie Lance, next, what goalie could pick up. So, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Like, honestly, yeah. So, WWE reported open talks with Commander following, prior to following his debut, Dynamite debut. WWE reported interest in Commander for a little while now. Commander managed to catch your imagination on AWI and we took part of company's an annual phase of the Revolution Ladder match on March 1st. In Dynamite, the 24-year-old Luchador showcased their ability to high fly offense. Wait, oh, when he appeared on WWE Dynamite, he wasn't on a contract. W of the company, so yeah. Previous reports say the star is WA's radar following following is inspired for horse a lot of match. Melsa reserved a new span on this in new report. Melsa claimed that WWE opened talks to commander but were after peeling dynamite. The company changed the head of recruitment site when a reason for trying to bring in new talent. WWE had talks with Commander Pride A M announcing the ladder match. Trying to do a tryout but not contract for it. They did speed up the process, contact him again after he was announced for being a ladder match. Again, right after the match, tried to speed up the process. Chain and head of recruitment WSP and wanted to wanted consider new talent. Look. I, uh, yeah. And actually, yes, that's their opinion. This is from Meltzer, so I, it's, it's, all things are good. Like, basically, take Meltzer's always with a grain of salt. We don't know if we could trust Meltzer at this point. He's good with story ratings, but. Not with news. I don't trust Meltzer. I'm sorry. Don't trust him. Not sorry. Don't trust him. But, yeah, honestly, Commander could be in in signed addition to the mostly AEW roster or possible WWE roster. So, mostly I watch WWE on YouTube these days. I'm not going to watch on TV. Only pay-per-views, YouTube, highlights. It's more better for me. So, that's my opinion. Maybe it's interesting when talent star ended up signing. So it's interesting. 
Like it's like it's a lot interesting with Commander, which will sign. I'm more hitting towards AEW, but WWE's a uh, WWE's might be the best bat in the end. I don't know, maybe it could be anyone. Like don't forget about uh, Impact Wrestling, GCW. Don't forget New Japan. No, New Japan like Jack Wrestling Noah. Uh, don't don't forget the five wrestling. Don't forget that. There's oh yeah, there's uh, the NWA. No, no, not the NWA. They're like fucking freaks. I'm thinking Champ should wrestle for hot from Hollywood or Florida. It could, it was gonna call your way, you know. Honestly, it could be any way. Anyway, it's a good opportunity, Commander. So take it take it as you can, Commander. I support you. All right, mm-hmm. all right. Before we go, I got some hot takes. I gotta say, <coughs> Ric Flair should should stay in WWE. Meltzer is not reliable news. Uh, okay, GCW is a horrible company. Brent Ma- Brent should jump off a bridge. That's my hot takes. And Booker T should stay away from reporting the news. He has no right to report news. He's a show for WWE. He's a he looks triple H's ass cracks. So what it is is how it is. So um, <laughs> yeah, I that's my hot taste. So yeah, this is a Gus Ali podcast. I'll see y'all next Saturday. Thank you. Bye.